time for a little show and tell of what I have printed over the last couple weeks. These are our bunch of the things that I have done. First up, this vase. I absolutely love this vase. It's got an unusually complex design. As you can see here, it's got this little wiggle wiggle pattern on the inside, so it creates these ridges inside. And then it's got the shape on the outside. It's printed in vase mode. I printed this on my WeDo M40 with Amelin wood filament and a 0.6 millimeter CHT knockoff nozzle, which works pretty darn well. And that looks, it looks like cardboard almost. Like MDF or cardboard. It's really kind of cool. I like that. It's not airtight, but I could just put some epoxy in there and take care of making watertight. And I love the way this smells like wood as you print with it. So uh, I'll have links down below for these models, but I think it's Vase 794 or something like that. <laughs> Somebody who made a whole bunch of random vases, but that just came out really cool. I think it's a little too bright. There we go. Not quite so bright there. And then um, a couple of designs of my own. I made these quick links. So normally this would be, you know, a larger quick link. I made this very small to fit inside my rockets. So my three inch class rockets, this will easily fit inside without a problem. And the strength is just simply amazing. It only weighs about five or six grams, depending on what film you use. And it is surprisingly functional. So you can pop that open there. You actually have to bend that like that in order to put the threaded piece on. These are actually too tight for this. I gotta shrink, I gotta enlarge those a little bit for this particular filament. Uh, this is so strong, however, that I can't break this by simply pulling it. If I try to pull this, try to break it this way, I can't do it. I might be able to break it if I try twisting it, but even doing that, it is surprisingly resilient. Uh, more than enough for anything a model rocket's going to encounter during flight. So now I can print my own D-Links in about 25 minutes on my 3D printer with about 5 grams of filament. So that's awesome. I love that. I made glider hooks. So I actually dropped the other one down here somewhere. <laughs> so these are for model rockets. So you would attach one of these to your rocket. And then one of these would get attached to your glider. I actually have a new design I'm working on that seems to work okay. I realized that the whole reason I designed this way was because the hooks are interchangeable. So you could take two of these hooks, flip one this way, and they interlock with each other. And I realized that the reason we do that is for casting. So you only have to have one mold. You just cast two of the same part. But with 3D printing, you have to print both parts anyway. So it's okay if they're different. So I came up with a way to make this vase mode compatible. This is vase mode compatible this way, but I need it to be vase mode compatible this way. And the problem is a hook creates an island. So you can't have an island. I think I figured out a way to do this in vase mode. So I'll be showing that once I perfect the printing of it. Uh, I also made my own tie. So this is an articulated tie. There was one available on printables or something like that, but it said no remixing, no derivatives, and I was like, screw that. So I made my own. <laughs> um, all in Tinkercad. So this is, I have a tie. So these P, if you need to make this shorter, just remove a piece or two from here. The hinge, you can actually see it in here. See the blue? So the hinge is just you shove a piece of filament in there. If you have a tough time getting the filament to go in, start the filament in, then take your nippers and grab the filament, you know, about half an inch from here, and then just grab it gently and push. Don't squeeze hard, you'll cut right through the filament, but you can use this as a gripper. You can grab gently and just keep shoving it in, and it'll shove right through. And once you have it through, you just nip off the excess at both ends, work up the hinge a little bit to free everything up, and you are good to go. I printed this one with no top or bottom layer, just so you get that cool infill pattern. It's in three sections, so it'll fit on a, um, a 200 by 200 bed. I did it in three sections instead of one platen because the infill is determined per model. So I kept having trouble getting the infill to center in the model. 
And that's because it was it 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 does the infill for the entire model. So if all three sections are one model, then it can't do it. <laughs> you know, it, it comes up off centered. You get one center and the next one's not centered. But by doing it in three sections and then doing a separate process in Simplify 3D for each section, it centers the infill for each model. And so now I have nice centered infill. You can also print it solid if you want. Um, I print this at 0.3 millimeter layer height, but then I switch to 0.2 millimeter at 7 millimeters to print this part here. Gives it that little bit of 3D knot effect, that bow knot effect. Um, it came out really nice. I like that. Now I have another version of this. Um, I have several versions actually. I shortened this a little bit so that this flat area is a little wider. And I put the Stargate home symbol on here. And I also put the Chinese Lucky Cat on there. And then there's a blank one as well so that you can you know, use my instructional video to convert a JPEG clip art or PNG clip art, whatever you want, to SVG. And you can import that into Tinkercad and use it as an embossing tool. And you can put your own logo on here. So you can put the Chevy logo, the Ford logo, the Jeep logo, the bank logo, sports team logo, whatever, anything that's simple. You'll be able to emboss that logo onto there. So you have your own tie. You also have a spot on the back here to put a 60 by 10 by 3 magnet. So what you do is you get three of these magnets. You put two of them on your shirt. So one on the inside, one on the outside. Let them snick together. And then this will attach to the magnet on your shirt without a problem or if you want to use a neckband of some sort there's a hole that goes through this so you can put ribbon elastic string paracord whatever you want through there and you can tie that around your neck that way if you want as well so that is a a nifty 3d printed tie i kind of like that uh, theoretically if you did um top layers you could put symbols on all of this you could put symbols on everything all of this you can bring this into tinkercad no problem and make whatever changes you want to it I thought that was pretty cool. So there's my nice little compact articulating flexi tie. And then last for today, I think, well, I'm going to show you one of my rockets too. Um, I saw these and I saw one of these on, on Thingiverse and it kind of motivated me to make my own because I've always wanted to make one of these. I want it to be small, simple, elegant, and also cheap and easy to print. So this is a cat rub corner. So you, you attach this to the corner of your house and your cats can rub up against this. They like the feel of it. It's a massaging feeling. So I've always wanted one in vase mode. So I designed my own in vase mode. Um, I have a relief cut here so that if your corners bulge a little bit, this will still sit flush. Um, I have, this is in vase mode. So there's two ribs on each side to give it a little bit of rigidity. So you have flexibility there where you need it. But this part here where the cat rubs against be nice and rigid. Um, you can either attach this with glue adhesive or double stick tape. Um, and also, I have this tab on the side here. It's just a double layer of plastic. So you can you can drill a screw straight through this. So you can put a wall anchor, like stick a screw here and a screw here, and you'll be fine, or just two in the middle. So you can screw this in, you can glue it in, you can tape it in, however you want to attach this. This is compatible pretty much with whatever you want to do. And this prints in less than two hours at a modest speed. A bamboo could probably print this in, what, 20 minutes? <laughs> Maybe 30. Um, but it's also in vase mode, so it'll be basically error-free as long as the first layer sticks. And um, it only takes 30 grams of plastic, 27.8 grams of plastic. And I think that's an overestimate because I don't think it takes even that much plastic. Let's find out. It's not balanced. That is. Let's see how much is. I know it's very, very little. Unit grams. <laughs> 18 grams of plastic. Uh, 16 grams of plastic. So 16 to 18 grams of plastic. Very, very little plastic. And my quick link here. That'll, that, that doesn't even register. <laughs> um, all right. The scale is not very accurate. It's five grams. So the slicer was correct. It's five grams. Um, although I think this one might be slightly heavier. Mm, six grams. So that the wood is slightly lighter. 
and the tie with the magnet for anybody curious that's 83 grams that's with the magnet I need to get my good scale down. That's not very accurate. But I also made a few rockets this week. But first up is my groove tube rocket. This is 13 millimeter class. So this should fly on a 13 millimeter rocket motor. All printed in vase mode. Takes very little plastic. And of course I can scale this up and down. But I have to redo all the cuts in order to do that. And then a new one I came up with. I was just thinking ring fin. I was like, you know something? That would look, this one's complete. This has got an internal hook for your shock cord. It's got the external launch lugs. So you just print these two pieces, tie them together, and you're ready to go, basically. But this one is really cool. This is I call this the Citadel. It's got that gothic church-like vibe going for it. So this is just a nice, I just gave it a, a shape and a design. For a ring fin. That's the nose cone. I'm having trouble with the nose cones. They're coming out undersized. Um, this shoulder is supposed to be the exact same diameter as the inside of this. But even double wall, it's it's way too loose. And I'm not... I, I don't know if this is printing undersized or if this is printing undersized. Find out. It should be, I think, 14 by 7, 14.7. 15.7? But this is undersized. It's supposed to be 15.7, and it's coming out 15.3. And it's a heat thing, because I can see that the it's like a like it um it shrank. And I'm not entirely sure why. Why why doesn't this one shrink? Is it just a larger footprint that's attached to the bed so it doesn't experience the shrinkage? And because this is thinner, I don't know. I'm gonna try printing at a lower bed temperature and a lower uh, printing temperature. Maybe this PLA just doesn't like being printed as hot as I typically print. So I got to figure that out, but I'm also printing a gigantic one, uh -huh. right there. <laughs> That's the middle of a 29-hour print, so that will take a while to finish. Um, but that's going to be a 1.2 meter tall version of this, where this is um, blown up to 400% um, scale, and. Um, split in half so 400 millimeters each and then the nose cone is almost 400 millimeters so that will be um i'm going to this one i'm going to do differently these two parts are going to glue together so i'm going to have a um a, a coupler inside here and the reason i'm doing that is number one i want these to line up perfectly i want there to be no almost no seam and as you can see i'm using a color transition filament so I want to go directly from one part to the next without printing interstages using that filament so that I get that nice color gradation from the bottom of the rocket all the way to the top of the rocket. So that should look pretty cool. But um, yeah, I'm going to release this to my patrons soon. They're going to get all of my models for free. Um, but this is the, the what I call the Citadel. Um, this one here is just two layers of plastic. It's just a 13 millimeter rocket, so it's not going to experience much flight force. The larger one has ribs to strengthen um, the whole structure. But yeah, that's cool. I'm going to have to see if I can get more of this everyone sparkling silver. I like this filament. It's nice. So, that's it. If you have any questions, ask down below. I will add links to where you can get all of these files from. This one's not available yet. I don't post my rocket files until I have them flight confirmed. Um, I want to make sure they actually fly. <laughs> Less. Well, no, this, I mean, it only takes, you know, what 30 grams of plastic it's very little plastic it's a two-hour print um that's it i will see you guys later you guys have a great day